How you doing? My name is Jason Park. I'm a feature filmmaker. I've made four feature films and we're currently in production on our fifth feature film, Rhino King. So I wanted to talk to you guys about my thought process on movies and the movie industry and what I think's actually going to happen within the next 20 to 30 years. Seems like it's very far away, but 40 years ago it was the 80s. Now it's 2024. I think, and if it doesn't even happen in 20, 30 years, I think it's probably more than likely it will definitely happen by, you know, by 100 years for sure. Like 100, for sure, 100% in 100 years this will happen. I think with all of the competition that movies now have to compete with, the attention spans of the customer as the viewer has gotten shorter and shorter and it doesn't look like there's anything in sight that suggests that that attention span will expand. So, you know, somebody will consume a hundred shorts before they even wake up out of bed and be entertained and be hit with that dopamine nonstop compared to watching a film. I think we've reached a day and age where films will become what theater plays are today. Does that mean that they will absolutely disappear? No, I don't think it means they'll disappear. But what I think will happen is movies will become a novelty. I think a lot of theaters will shut down. They'll, they'll no longer cease to exist. Uh, the price to go and see a movie is pretty expensive. We, my son and I went to watch Deadpool 2. We spent like, I'm uh, sorry, Deadpool 3. We spent like 80 bucks. The tickets were 16 bucks uh, a piece, which is $32. And then that's not including popcorn and drinks and all that stuff. When in reality, you can buy the Blu-ray when it comes out for 20 bucks and actually own it. Um, and then I had an epiphany in that moment. Well, when you go to the movie theater, what Deadpool 3 did with its marketing and then just the whole experience is you're going for an event. You have to look at movies theaters as an event. No longer just like, hey, I'm just gonna watch this movie because you could do that at home. You have to look at it as like, I'm going to a rock show, right? I'm going to a live play. That's what the movie uh, experience has to become, right? That's essentially what it is. So the reason why I say I think that movies will become what plays are to today or theater is at one time, before the motion picture, theater was the thing. Everybody went to go see theaters, right? They went to go see the plays be played out so the human uh, experience can be enjoyed through that play. I think movies will become just that. It'll be something that you experience that's cool, that's a one-off, but it's no longer gonna dominate your day or dominate your nights the way that they dominate them uh, in the 90s and 2000s and now, right? What do most of us do? We're not talking about the people that go skydiving and do the odd things. We're talking about majority of us, what do we do? We go to work, we work, whether you're an entrepreneur, you work for a company, you work for yourself. You come home, you eat some food, you throw on some Netflix, you lay down, you watch a show, maybe you go through your phone while you're watching the movie or the show, and then you go to bed and then you rinse and repeat. I think movies as a medium, has too much competition and competition in that space will only grow because you're no longer competing with other studios that are producing movies or other studios that are producing video games. You're competing against every other human on the planet that has access to a cell phone. And with that access to the cell phone, they can um, televise themselves doing whatever they, they, they're doing. I mean, some of the biggest celebrities in the world right now, right? And all a celebrity is is someone that's known for something, right? They're very popular in that space. You think of someone like Kai Sennett. He's a streamer. He streams from his house. It doesn't matter how successful he is now and it, it could be a penthouse or whatever it is, a big warehouse. He streams from his house. All of these streamers are making a lot of money. They're super famous, they're wealthy, and all they're doing is streaming from their house. So now the studio has to think about this. Okay, I'm gonna invest 50 to $100 million in this project bring this pool of talent together to create this piece. And I hope 10, 50 million people watch it and we're able to get our money back or I'm at least able to sell it for a profit. And then you have someone like a Kai or someone like a Mr. Beast, they're at home or they're by themselves and they're making content 
and they're getting that same amount of money or viewership uh, on their project and it's just them and maybe their friend. That balance is not sustainable. It's just not because I wouldn't be willing to risk $100 million to make a million dollars. That's too high of a gamble when you as the studio now, here's what you can do. I can go and invest not 100 I can go and invest $10 million in these 10 streamers that are now going to bring in, right? I'm going to pay them a million bucks a piece for the year, but they're going to bring in $100 million. That's a 10x on your investment. 